You know, people want to be happy. People want to be blessed. People want to have a good life. And it's wonderful news that God wants the same thing for us. God wants us to have a good life. God wants us to be successful. And in Deuteronomy chapter 30, where we're going to go today, God says, look, I've set before you life and good and death and evil. So choose life. <laughs> Sounds like an easy choice, doesn't it? So choose life. So we're going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 30 today. We're going to look at what God says about how to choose life. And then we're going to see that in the book of Romans, the apostle Paul quotes from Deuteronomy 30, chapter 30, and then shows that in the New Testament, since the death and resurrection of Christ, having a good life and being successful starts with a foundation of taking Christ as your Lord. So let's go right to Deuteronomy chapter 30 and see what God is saying, because this truly expresses the heart of God, that he wants us to have a good life. And so in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 11, we read, For this commandment that I command you this day, it's not too hard for you, nor is it far away. And what a blessing that is, you know. <laughs> Bottom line, it's not really hard to choose life and good. Uh, we can be stubborn about it. We can be rebellious about it. We can say we don't want to do what God says to do. But the bottom line is obeying God is not that difficult. Absolutely. And then on Deuteronomy 30, God goes on to say, you know, kind of expound upon how it's not difficult. He says, verse 12, it's not in heaven that you should say, who will go up for us to heaven and bring it to us so that we may hear it and do it. Verse 13, neither is it beyond the sea, the ocean, that you should say, who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it. Verse 14, but the word is very near you in your mouth and in your heart, so that you may do it. Now, wait a minute. Now, <laughs> how could God tell the people at this point that the word that they were to obey was near them, that it was in their heart, that it was in their mouth? How could he say that? Well, this is written. This is Deuteronomy. And the children of Israel, after leaving Egypt, wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. And Deuteronomy was written in the last month or last two months of that 40-year wanderings. So for 40 years, the congregation that Moses was speaking to had been hearing the Word of God and doing the Word of God. And so he says, look, this isn't hard to do. This is, you've been doing it. <laughs> you've been hearing it. It's, it's in your mouth. It's in your heart. And so then he says, so here's the deal, verse 15. Behold, I have set before you this day life and good and death and evil. And we need to understand what those mean because the word life here has what some scholars refer to as the pregnant sense of the word. It means life now. And, and that's primarily in this context what the, what the word life means. It means having a wonderful life now. But it has also the meaning of everlasting life because if a person obeys God, they, they're supposed to have a great life now and also live forever. So that's why the pregnant sense, you have the primary meaning of a good life now and then you have the secondary meaning of everlasting life as well. So God says, look, I have set before you life and good and death and evil. And then the verse continues, and it's important that we understand the connection between verse 15 and verse 16. Some of the English versions break them into two verses, but it's important that we see the connection between them because what he's going to do in verse 16 is he's going to tell us how it is that he's set before us life and good and death and evil. So he says, I've set before you this day life and good and death and evil in that I command you this day to love Yahweh your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his ordinances in order that you may live and multiply and that Yahweh your God may bless you in the land where you are entering to possess it. <laughs> 
So what he's done in 15 and 16 is he said, I've set before you this day life and good and death and evil, and I'm commanding you. You want to choose life? I'm commanding you then to love God, walk in his ways, keep his commandments. And that's how a person would choose life, by doing that. And he says, you know, how do you choose death and evil? Well, verse 17, but if your heart turn away and you do not listen, but you're drawn away from God, you worship other gods and serve them. Then verse 18, I declare to you this day that you will surely perish. Why could God say that? Because life and good comes from God. <laughs> and if you're going to walk away from him, then you don't have the life and the good. Then you get, then by your choice, by your actions, you choose the death and evil. And so he says, you, you want to walk away from God? Not a good idea. He's the source of life and good. But you want to walk away from God? Well, then I declare to you, you will perish. You will not prolong your days in the land that you're crossing the Jordan to enter to possess it. And then he goes on and he kind of repeats where he'd been. He says in verse 19, Today I call heaven and earth to be witnesses against you. Now, why does God say this? I call heaven and earth to be witnesses against you. Well, you needed two or three witnesses. <laughs> so God calls heaven and earth to be witnesses. Witnesses of what? Witnesses that I, God, have given you the choice. I've given you the choice. You can choose life, a great life now and an everlasting life later, I've given you the choice to choose that, or you can choose death and evil. And so I'm, I'm calling heaven and earth as witnesses that I've done this because the choice that you make is yours to make, but you're gonna suffer the consequences or get the blessings of whichever choice that you make. So he says in verse 19, today I call heaven and earth to be witnesses against you that I've set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. Therefore, choose life. And that's God's heart for us, that we would choose life, that we would choose to live, live a great life here. Be happy, be blessed, be successful, and live forever with Jesus Christ in a wonderful place with a lot of great people. That's a good choice. He says, therefore, choose life so that you may live, you and your seed. Verse 20, again, verse 20 is connected to verse, uh, to verse 19. In verse 19, he tells us to choose life. And verse 20, again, he repeats how you choose life. Verse 20, by loving Yahweh your God, by obeying his voice, and by holding fast to him, for he is your life and the strength of your days, so that you may live in the land that Yahweh swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. So here in Deuteronomy 30, twice we see God says, I set before you life and good, death and evil. I've set before you uh, life and, and, and blessing and death and cursing. You know, and, and then he says, choose life. And then both in, in verse 15 or verse 16, and in, in verse 20, in verses 16 and 20, he tells us, how do you make the choice? How do you choose good? How do you choose blessing? How do you choose success? You choose it by obeying God, by following God. And then it goes on, it has that beautiful parenthetical expression, for he is your life. Yeah, we, <laughs> we're, we're pretty small and weak here on the earth, you know. I, I can't make it, I can't make the weather be nice to where the crops produce. I can't make the ground be fertile. I can't make a seed grow. You know, we need God's blessing if we're going to prosper in this life. And we definitely need God's power and blessing if we're going to live forever. And so God told us in 15 and 16, I've set before you life and death, and you get life by following me. Again, in verse 19 and 20, I've set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. You get life and the blessing by following me, by obeying me, by loving me, and that's what we want to do. Interestingly enough, now, this is before Christ, and so there was an emphasis in the Old Testament on the foundation being knowing the law and then doing the law. And then Christ comes, and Christ dies. And in Christ's death, he pays for our sin. And in paying for our sin now, a man gets everlasting life, a human being, a person. 
man or woman gets everlasting life. How? By taking Christ as Lord. And this is the essence of Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And so it's interesting that now what the Apostle Paul is going to do in Romans chapter 10 is he's going to go back to Deuteronomy and he's going to make reference to Deuteronomy and show how things have shifted between the time of Moses and the Old Testament law and the time we live in today in the church age in the administration of grace. So here in Romans chapter 10 and verse 5, again, like I say, Paul's going to take us back to the law. So Romans 10, 5, he says, For Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law. Okay, talking about the righteousness that's based on the law, it involves works. And so he says, he goes on to quote the verse, for Moses writes about the righteousness that's based on the law, that the person who does these commandments will live by them. And that's from Leviticus chapter 18, verse 5. So Paul quotes Leviticus chapter 18, verse 5, and says, This is what Moses said. He said the, the righteousness from the law is the person who does the commandments will live by them. And then he starts verse 6, verse 6, with the word but, because he's going to say, okay, things are different in these New Testament times. There's a new foundation, and that foundation is now Jesus Christ. And so he starts, eh, verse 5, that's what Moses wrote. Verse 6, but, and then notice here, he's not going to say, Scripture says, or it is written, or Moses wrote. He's, gonna, he's going to make the righteousness that you, have an, uh, you and I have today by faith in Christ, by trusting in Christ, he's going to make that the speaker. And so he says, the righteousness that is based on trust speaks this way. And why does he do that? Why doesn't he say it is written and quote the Old Testament? <laughs> Because in the Old Testament, Christ hadn't come yet. He hadn't died yet. So what he says is, look, we know what Moses wrote about righteousness. But now we're talking about righteousness after the death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ. So that righteousness talks like this. And now he's going to refer to the law and with using vocabulary that everybody goes, wait a minute, I kind of remember that from Deuteronomy. But he's going to change things a bit so that we get the New Testament perspective. So he starts in verse 6. But the righteousness that is based on trust speaks this way. Do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is, in order to bring Christ down. See, in the Old Testament, it was that you, you would want to bring the word of God down, the law of God down. Here he says, you know, don't say in your heart who will ascend into heaven to, bring, to try and bring Christ down. He's already come. <laughs> we don't need to bring him down. He's already here. Uh, and that reference, don't say in your heart about ascending into heaven, comes out as we read it, Deuteronomy 30, verse 12. And then he says, verse 7, or who will ascend into the abyss? Now paired with what he just said in Deuteronomy 12, uh, from 30, 12, this is a, a change from, in the Old Testament it was, the word is not across the ocean, it's not beyond the sea, but it's close to you. And here he's saying, wait a minute, now there's, there's a different situation because the Messiah has come and died. So in verse 6, don't say who's going to go up to heaven and get it. Verse 7, who's going to descend into the abyss, that is the grave, that is in order to bring Christ up from among the dead. Why don't we have to ask who's going to bring Christ up? <laughs> we know the answer because he's already up. Absolutely. Christ has already come. Christ has already died. Christ has already been raised. So he says, don't say, you know, who will descend into the abyss. That is in order to bring Christ up from among the dead. Referencing Deuteronomy 30, 13. Verse 8, on the contrary, what does it, what does righteousness based on trust say? Then he, and again, he's referencing Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 30, verse 14. The message is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. Absolutely. And why would it be in their mouth and in their heart? Because they knew the Messiah was coming. That was the prophecies of all the Old Testament. They knew the Messiah was coming. 
So absolutely, he says, I'm going I'm to tell you a message that, that you should know. It's, it's really a theme, a major theme in the Old Testament, the coming of the Messiah. Oh, uh, yeah, no kidding. And, and, and so he says, here's the message that is near you. Now, remember from Deuteronomy, you know, the message that was near you was the law, and, and then you followed it and you obey God. But here he says, the message is near to you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. And this is the message of trust that we're proclaiming, uh, verse 9, because if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him out from among the dead, you will be saved. And that's the New Testament message. See, in the Old Testament message, what was it? Um, the person who does the commandments will live by them. Paul says, yeah, it's important to do commandments, but the foundation in the New Testament church is not the commandments of the law. The foundation in the New Testament church is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart God raised him from out from among the dead, you will be saved. Verse 10, for with a heart person believes resulting in righteousness and with the mouth confession is made resulting in salvation. So God has still, Old Testament and New Testament, God has still in the New Testament time set before us this day life and good and death and evil. And we still choose. In the Old Testament, the choice was made in your heart and then acted out in, what, in, in how you lived and whether you obeyed God and follow God. <laughs> Today, the choice is made in our hearts, just like it was in the Old Testament. Are you willing to take Christ as your Lord? Are you willing to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord? And do you believe that God raised him from the dead? Because if you do, that's the foundation then of your happiness. For You, you know you're going to live forever, for one thing. And if you're going to live forever, what's the world going to do to you? You know? But that's the foundation. And then life, true life, real life, successful life, happy life in this world now comes through our faith in Jesus Christ, our trust in Jesus Christ, and the good things He does for us. And then we add to that by doing things that the law says to do that are good, like loving God, following God, obeying His commandments, which things are also in the New Testament. God has set before us life and death, and a blessing and a cursing. Or as it's worded in Deuteronomy, God has set before us life and good and death and evil. Let's choose life. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching, liking, and commenting on this video. And please hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our future content. And if you'd like to consider donating to help with making videos like this, please go to truthortradition.com front slash donate. God bless you.